welcome to week 2 topic 1 our first topic is significance of mean significance of mean of large sample as we know the capital n represent size of the population small n represents size of the sample if size of the sample small n greater than 30 we call it a large sample if size of the sample n less than 30 we call it a small sample if n is equal to 30 this is the cutting point is arbitrary this is a matter of convergence so now we will discuss the test of significance of mean of large sample let us discuss the whole concept with the help of a small example which will help us to understand the concept better let us assess the technical ability of teachers of higher education in India with the help of a standardized test. Is it possible to take all teachers working in the field of higher education in the whole country? Of course the answer is no. The quite impossible, it is impractical also. Because teachers being quite numerous, quite large, they spread all across the country. So what to do? How to assess? We have to select a sample of 500 teachers. Let us take a teacher's number of teachers 500 out of the whole population. Suppose the mean score of 500 teacher is 46. This is a statistics. We do not know the parameter. Only we have at our hand the statistics. From this statistics, we have to estimate the parameter. We have to estimate the population value. That is the size of the population. That is the parameter. We have to study how far the sample mean represents the population mean. This is very important. Whether our sample mean is a representative of the population. The degree to which the sample mean represents the population mean is a significance of trustworthiness of the calculated sample mean. The degree of significance depends upon how well, how best the samples are drawn from the population. Selection of sample is very important. Identification of sampling method is very important. Therefore, always utmost care should be taken in selection of the sample to ensure that the sample is representing the population optimally. Through test of significance, we test representativeness of a sample statistics. Now, coming to the technical aspect. Assessment of significance of mean. Significance of mean can be assessed by two different ways. Remember, one is assessment of significance of mean with the help of standard error of mean, sigma m. Second aspect is with the help of test of null hypothesis. This concept of null hypothesis, testing the null hypothesis, we will deal in the subsequent week. In this week, we shall deal with how to assess the significance of mean with the help of standard error of mean. First, calculate the sample mean, sample mean ms. Then, from the sample mean, we have to estimate the population mean with certain degree of confidence. Test of significance of mean from the standard error of mean. Let us understand the concept with the help of the same example. That is, we are assessing the technical ability of teachers working in the field of higher education in India. How many, what is our sample size? Sample size is 500. What is our mean? Mean is 46. So 46 is a mean of sample drawn from the population. We can draw as many as sample with sample size 500 from the population. According to central limit theorem, if large number of samples are drawn from the population, the mean of the sample will tend to distribute towards normality. Let us take 100 different sample. Sample 1, sample 2, sample 3, sample 3, 4, sample 5, up to sample 100. Each sample size is 500. From each sample, we can get one sample mean. So the mean of first sample is MS1, second is MS2, third is MS3. Like this, 100 sample means are at our hand. The mean value will tend to differ from each other due to fluctuation in sampling and will form a complete series 
MS1, MS2, MS3, MS100 will form a complete series. This series so obtained, we call this series sampling distribution of mean. Remember very carefully, the series so obtained is called sampling distribution of mean and the series is normally distributed. So again I repeat, this is very important concept according to the central limit theorem. If large number of samples, we have 100 different samples, if large number of samples are drawn from the population randomly, the mean of the sample will tend to distribute normally. On increasing the size of the sample, the approximation to the normal distribution increases. Arithmetic mean of sample mean is equal to the population mean. Out of 100 sample mean, some may be greater than the population mean, some may be less than the population mean, some may be equal to the population mean. Sample mean will deviate the population mean on either side, positive side, negative side. So the deviation may be positive deviation if the sample mean is greater than the population mean. The deviation may be negative deviation if the sample mean is less than the population mean. The deviation may be zero if the sample mean is equal to the population mean. On examination of the deviation, you find there are few large number of deviations, few small deviations and a few zero deviations. This shows that the sample mean, that is the distribution of sample mean is normally distributed. We have 100 different samples in our hand, MS1 to MS100. Standard deviation of 100 sample mean is called standard error of mean. This concept we have already discussed in week 1. Remember, standard error of mean. The standard error of mean is denoted by the symbol sigma m. This is the spread of sample mean around the population mean. So that is sigma m is a measure of variability of sample mean that is called measure of divergence of sample mean from the population mean. Sigma m is equal to sigma by root over of m where sigma is equal to standard deviation of the population, n is equal to sample size. We can rarely have standard deviation of population. In most of the cases, standard deviation of population is not on our hand. If we want to get the standard deviation of population, we generally use the standard deviation of the sample. Please note, mean of the population is a fixed value. We do not know it. We can only say that sample mean will miss the population mean by 3 sigma m. So considering the normal distribution, we can say that almost all cases of sample mean will lie within a range within a certain limit. The limit is plus minus 3 sigma m. That is all sample mean will lie within mean of the population plus 3 sigma m and mean of the population minus 3 sigma m. This is the range or this is the limit within which the sample means are distributed. From this we can say that sample mean will be at best 3 sigma m less than the population mean or 3 sigma m more than the population mean. So by knowing the sigma m standard error of mean, we can estimate the population mean from the sample mean. This is very important. This is what is called statistical inference knowing the sample mean, how to estimate the population mean and to what extent within a particular degree of significance. You are going to respond to the question forum, review the document and finally you will assess yourself with the help of a small self-assessment test. I hope you are enjoying the course. Wish you all the best.